I'm a member of the uh, Open Worm Project, um, which is an open science project. Our goal is to create an artificial or virtual uh, uh, model of a, of a very small creature called C. elegans. A C. elegans is, a, is something called a nematode worm. They're all over the world, they live in the soil, they eat bacteria, they're about one millimeter long, they're transparent, so they're really easy to see on a microscope. They're not easy to see with the, with the naked eye. It just became uh, a, a very useful model organism for biologists to study all these uh, aspects of living organisms. It has 302 neurons, actually. It has uh, a few thousand synapses, which are connections between the neurons. Even with that, uh, there's a lot we don't know, but there's a lot we do know. 300 is, is much easier to study than something like humans have, which is about 86 billion neurons. Our goal is to actually take all those pieces and create this artificial worm inside of a computer, or in my case, in a robot. We know what those connections are. We can put those in a software model. That's what's running the worm. It comes directly from what we know about the connectome of the worm, which has been known for many years. If it behaves, we, we can now suggest that this is how the actual organism works. So, Human neurons are a bit different, well, significantly different than C. elegans neurons, but still there is a transfer of, of knowledge about how those neurons work. Oh, we definitely can build a model of the brain. It will take some time more, but we definitely can build a model of the brain. Well, the Blue Brain project is uh, a project with the goal of simulating the brain. Uh, first, the brain of rodents, mice, rats, and eventually the brain, the human brain. What we're doing is building a, a computer replica of the brain, somatosensory cortex, and uh, hippocampus, um, thalamus, cerebellum basal ganglia, other areas, other brain areas. So we build those areas. We've made the first step by next month or so, we will release the first brain region model. And now with the tools that we have to build this piece, we can use these tools to build any piece of the brain. It seems to us that there's nothing magical about how our brains work. And so eventually we would be able to um, emulate human brains running on silicon hardware. Machine intelligence has a greater potential than biological intelligence because there are fundamental limits to information processing in a biological substrate. There is a limit to how many times a second a neuron can fire, there is a limit to how many of them you can fit inside a cranium, but those limits don't apply in the case of machine intelligence. It can be the size of a warehouse or larger. Uh, signals can propagate at the speed of light. So ultimately I think that machine intelligence will surpass biological intelligence. Alpago 
알파고 제로는 독학 36시간 만에 지난해 3월 이세돌 구단을 4대1로 이긴 알파고 리 버전의 실력을 넘어섰습니다. 이 알파고 제로는 아무 데이터 없이 스스로 학습했다고 보시면 됩니다. 사람의 데이터 없이 강화 학습만을 통해서 스스로가 스스로하고 바둑을 둬서 이세돌 구단뿐만이 아니고 이세돌 구단을 작년에 이긴 오리지널 알파고한테도 100, 100번 해서 100승을 거뒀다는 라 겁니다. 큰 질문은 그거죠. 이게 바둑만 그럴까요? So what better way to do this than getting neural nets to design better neural nets? We call this approach AutoML. It's learning to learn. So whenever I spend time with the team and think about neural nets building their own neural nets, it reminds me of one of my favorite movies, Inception. And I tell them, we must go deeper. 스스로와의 학습을 통해서 세상을 설명할 수 있는 기계가 나온다는 것은 어쩌면 그렇게 멀지 않은 미래에 기계가 과학을 하고 기계가 세상을 설명하고 우리는 아직까지 이해하지도 못하던 자연의 법칙을 또 찾아낼 수 있지 않을까라는 겁니다. study Korean and then we can suddenly speak Korean. We can study to become a lawyer and now we have new skills. It's this power to learn which has enabled us humans to become the most powerful organisms on this planet. 3.0 is maybe where life is going. Life 3.0 can design not just its software but also its hardware. We're obviously not there, but we're going in this direction. If we humans create life 3.0, it has the potential to become much more powerful and intelligent than us. Our intelligence is limited by how big a brain can fit through our mother's birth canal when we get born and, and the constraints of biology. But um, there is nothing in the laws of physics that say that one cannot have much more intelligent beings if you, if you break these chains of, of, of biology. The reason that I give such broad definitions is because I really don't like carbon chauvinism. This idea that you can only be alive and only be intelligent if you're made of meat, if you're made of carbon. <clears throat> I think this is an idea that uh, we need to retire. So if you have intelligence, by my definition, that's not biological, that's what we call artificial intelligence. And if you have something which is alive, which is not biological, then that's artificial life. Um, but that doesn't mean that it has to be worse in any way. <clears throat> It can, in fact, be just as great or greater than, than our kinds of life. I really do think that uh, we, that is humanity, is, uh, in the striking phrase of Olaf Stapleton, uh, the Archaeopteryx of the spirit. You know, the Archaeopteryx was a transition species between dinosaurs and birds. So it could fly, but not very well. It was kind of, but it had the seeds of really great flyers and its own thing and lived its own kind of existence. And looking back on it, though, was kind of a transitional uh, stage. And I really do think that in the life of intelligence, in the life of the mind, humanity is like that. 
We are very gifted and capable of doing uh, wonderful things with our minds, but the machines we're creating will be much more powerful than, than we are. That's a very strange prospect uh, from the point of view of history. Humans didn't see this coming, and, and I think few people even today perceive that that's what's happening, but I think it's hard to avoid that conclusion. There's no such thing as super intelligence. It's not a meaningful concept. It's simply something that scares people and that is interesting to write about. That's purely fiction. It's no more real than vampires or werewolves. The singularity is nonsense. There's no scientific basis for believing that this is occur going to occur or that we're approaching the singularity in any reasonable way. It's actually more of a mystical or religious concept. It, it's the same sort of thinking as seen in religious cults of, uh, like especially millennial cults. Artificial intelligence is a primarily software technology. They're due to improvements in the underlying technology that make it possible to do certain classes of problems that we couldn't solve before, or that we can do them faster or better, or at, at uh, much lower cost. But there's no reason to believe that that's a curve that's going to continue up in terms of the utility to humans. In fact, it may go the other way. It may, may uh, limit. As a friend of mine once put it, Worrying about whether artificial intelligence will somehow, someday, exceed human capabilities is like worrying about overpopulation on the planet Mars. That, that, that's right. I mean, uh, you know, once, let, let's just see what happens when we get there. You know, don't worry about dividing Mars up uh, and, and what nas nationality is going to be on, uh, uh, Martians will be. Let's just get there first and then we'll decide that. Go to Mars. Colonize, colonize the galaxy, is, uh, I think. Our final invention, yes. I, I read the book. I've read all of the AI literature on this subject. Uh, Max Tegmark's new book, uh, Life 3.0, uh, is excellent. So we've been doing uh, issues of Skeptic Magazine on uh, artificial intelligence since the 90s. And even back then, uh, it was always uh, claimed that uh, we were only five years away from achieving artificial intelligence. And, you know, always will be, it would appear. Uh, here we are in 2017, almost 2018, and really still not close. We're a long ways away from, from that. Uh, you know, in this case with AI, in addition to Stephen Hawking, Elon Musk, and, and Bill Gates, and uh, others like them have said, you know, we should be careful. Okay, fine. Let's be careful. But what about all the tech people, the Google guys, for example, they've not said AI is going to be the apocalypse. In fact, they, they, and they're working in artificial intelligence. So uh, I just think they're overhyping the negativity. Good morning, Jarvis. Good morning, Mark. It's Saturday, so you only have five meetings. Room temperature is set to a cool 68 degrees. Earlier this year, I started building a simple AI to help run our home. I talked to Jarvis using this app I built. It uses artificial intelligence to understand me and figure out what to do. Um, nice most people that work in AI, right, um, you know, all the, the Google team, for example, um, uh, you know, people at Apple, you know, they're very optimistic about this. Jarvis. Your Mandarin is so soothing. So I, I think there's plenty of optimists to trump the pessimists. You know, it always takes some, you know, celebrity to say something. You know, Stephen Hawking, when he, when he pronounces on anything, people go crazy and the press covers it. 
unless we learn how to prepare for and avoid the potential risks. AI could be the worst event in the history of our civilization. It brings dangers, like powerful autonomous weapons, or new ways for the few to oppress the many. You know, Stephen Hawking says aliens are going to be evil. Oh no, we better not look for aliens, you know. Come on. I don't, I don't know that we know enough about what intelligence is for it to really be meaningful uh, to the idea of something that is vastly, vastly smarter than us. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I don't think we understand intelligence well enough to, uh, to really speak meaningfully about a super intelligence. Super intelligence라는 책을 쓴 옥스퍼드의 닉 보스트롬. 그분은 슈퍼 인텔리전스가 온대요. 수십 년 내에 온답니다. 오히려 차라리 1, 2년 안에 날짜 정해서 온다라고 하나님이 오고 예수님이 온다고 하는 그런 사이비 목사들이 있었습니다. 그분들이 오셔는 더 솔직하다는 거죠. 왜? 매달 며칠 날짜를 정해 놨기 때문에 그분들은 그때까지 벤처를 하는 겁니다. 하지만 고양이에게 우리가 10년, 20년 동안 말을 가르친다고 해서 말을 배우나요? 한국말을? 안 배웁니다. 그건 뭐냐면 고양 고야, 고양이의 뇌 구조가 현재 그걸 담보하고 있지 못합니다. 우리가 아무리 데이터를 넣고 아무리 시간을 넣어도 그거 되지 않는 것이죠. Some people give you the impression that it's just a matter of making more powerful computers or having collecting more data. Uh, I don't think that's true at all. A search engine like Google is an application of AI. It remembers, you know, 500 billion web pages and what what those web pages contain. Um, it has a very superficial understanding of all of them. Well, AI, of course, has been a popular subject in fiction, and that's perhaps given it exaggerated exposure. But, but it is a serious subject. I think in a lot of ways, that is not so much a threat of artificial intelligence. The biggest threret is, is, is a much simpler threat. <laughs>